Hello and welcome, it's Machine Dana. I hope you're doing really, really well. So if you're here, there's a good chance that you've seen the first video in this two-part series. The first video being a challenge I set myself to keep within a $250 budget to get the absolute best value for money stream setup. So a budget stream setup. The challenge in this video, video number two, is to make that $250 budget stream setup to look and feel like a thousand dollar streaming setup we're taking all the really good value for money but on the cheaper end of the scale equipment and we're going to try and make it feel and look and sound like a lot more expensive equipment we're going to be covering loads of stuff in here lighting and positioning or microphone settings gates and things like that within obs and also the base settings we're going to be covering some stream setup type stuff and on top of that all of the webcam things like all the color settings the base settings of the webcam the color settings within OBS Studio. So we are fitting a lot into a quite a short video, but it really will take that first video to the next level. If you haven't taken a look at that first video, please take a look at it, at the actual equipment that I suggest and why I suggest it. And if you do end up buying any of that equipment, use the affiliate links in this video and also in that video, and it will support the channel. Obviously, you can like and subscribe if you want. And yeah, let's do this. Okay, so this is a little bit more complicated and difficult to record than you think because I've had to set everything up, do all the settings, and then I've basically had to retrospectively apply the commentary to it because I did this on my wife's laptop in my wife's office room. So that's why it looks all fluffy and nice and girly. It's my wife's office. She kindly let me use it to set up this stream setup. So this is completely away from my normal stream setup. This is literally a $250 stream setup. So first, we're going to just add the camera to the scene in OBS Studio. And out of the box, this is pretty much exactly what it looks like. I don't even think the aspect ratio was particularly right on this. I think that's why I was laughing here. Now, before we get into anything else here, what we're going to be doing is just looking at the lighting. Now, the reason why we want to look at the lighting first is because later we'll be making changes to the settings of the camera itself. And our objective is to make the lighting as consistent as possible, but also to get the lighting as bright, but as nice as possible. So we're taking into account ambient light but mainly also the lights for the camera itself you may not know this but cameras that have more lighting generally perform better so in general terms if you're struggling with getting the best from your webcam even if it's not the c920 that you've bought then try increasing the lighting but again i've only used the lighting that we purchased in this video there is no other lighting here so i've closed the blind and we've got three types of lighting here we've basically got two face cams that are around about a foot and a half tall and they can be adjusted or put onto tripods or whatever and then we've also got like a big soft box as well. Having these three lights gives us lots of different options for lighting because you can also put the gels in front of the lighting as well to create different colors that you can put both behind you or just to change the lighting color a little bit in front of you as well. So there's loads of different options. So as you can see, immediately by neutralizing the light from outside and closing the window to reduce any sound from outside, then turning the lights on straight away, the camera looks a lot better anyway. And all I'm doing at this point is just making adjustments to the layout of the stream itself so I feel comfortable with how it looks and feels. So I first tried it with the blue lighting and I wasn't so happy with the blue lighting. I actually ended up settling on one of the lights being a red gel pack and the other one being just the natural white light and then using the softbox as a fill light at the side of me. I thought this created a, quite a nice lighting effect and something I thought I could work with further forward with other settings within OBS and also the camera itself. So hopefully you can agree with me even straight away out of the box by adjusting the lighting, increasing the lighting and positioning them in the right area, putting the blinds down and making like a consistent light lighting level, the camera itself is already at a much better quality level. Now, the reason why I'm doing these stupid hand movements is just to show that the focus of the camera also operates a lot better when it's a lot better lit. So now first we're going to actually look here at the settings of the camera itself. Now you can get these within Streamlabs OBS or OBS Studio. Now you can choose to output to a different FPS if you've changed your frames per second output. Now this camera does operate at 60 frames per second, but at 1920 by 1080, it will only operate at 30 frames per second. But 30 frames per second is plenty for a webcam, so I wouldn't worry too much about that, even if you're running a 60 FPS stream. Now I've choose to set the resolution of the camera to 1920 by 1080. The reason why 
why I've done this is that by default, the camera won't always use the full resolution of itself until you go into it and set the resolution of the camera. So the default settings aren't always the full 1920 by 1080. So it's worth going in and actually manually setting the resolution. We have to activate the camera and within the configure video settings, these are the default settings that you'll see in both Streamlabs OBS or OBS Studio or whatever streaming software you use. Now, firstly, what I'm doing here is just fiddling around with the contrast and the brightness just to get this to look a little bit better. For me, I wanted to make it a little bit brighter so that later I can do some color adjustments. Now I see here the saturation is a little bit too much. So I'm just messing around with this bar until I'm okay and happy with the right level. And at any point you can just press the default button on here and it'll put all these settings back to default. Now it's important that you start first with the settings on the light and the lighting before you then move on to the OBS Studio filters. You may find that by doing all these things, you actually don't need to do much within OBS Studio. Now I've got this to the point where the mood of the lighting is actually quite good, although I didn't really like the sort of mark along my nose here. So I ended up adjusting the lighting a little bit more. And I think I'm eventually able to sort that out. I think at one point the light actually fell over as well. So... <laughs> <laughs> so all I did here was I basically just moved the lighting a little bit further forward so it acted more as a fill light than a side light. So now what I'm doing is just showing the full screen preview of this. This is everything without any OBS filters. A massive improvement, certainly from its base settings, even from the settings once we change the resolution and things like that. This camera is way better. You can see a lot more detail in my face. However, that also means you can see all the ugly little marks and spots and things like that. So there's stuff we can do about that. Now there are a couple of different things I'm going to go into here. There's one which is a LUT filter and and also the settings in terms of just colorization filters. You can add these by right clicking and clicking on filters. You click on the plus icon and then you can apply a LUT or you can apply a color correction. First, I'm gonna apply the color correction. And again, similar thing to earlier, we're just adjusting some of these settings now in OBS, really fine tune the quality and color of the camera. A lot of this is personal preference. You may find, for example, that you prefer a highly saturated look, in which case go for a highly saturated look. That's not a problem. Me personally, I actually prefer a slightly dimmed lighting and I prefer to have like quite sharp edges as well. And that's just my own personal preference. So I'm playing around with some of the saturation here, a little bit too much. So I just adjust that down a little bit. Didn't like it so I clicked on default settings here to get it all the way back to normal there's also a few shift you can do which can if you want effects on your stream or whatever you can use that in different uh, in different ways I'm sure you can get pretty creative with that so I didn't actually change all too much in the core corrections this really was sort of fine tuning at this point so I'm relatively happy with how that looks all I've done really is make some of the darker blacks darker and I've just lifted the lightness of the whole thing in general now I'm going to go to this and add a filter for a LUT filter now this is just a LUT filter that I've been able to create myself but you can buy LUT filters online They're they're quite cheap to buy uh, and they're all kinds of different styles and they're sort of like preset looks for example if you want like a cold look and feel or if you want a warm look and feel or something a little bit more creative you can literally browse different look filters online and buy these but you can also make look filters as well now, unfortunately at the time of this video i've not done a look filter video so you can make looks free of charge within davinci resolve or something like that i will be doing a future video on how to make look filters and customize it perfectly to your settings because all this does is allow you to then open up all the settings within a really nice video editing software and use all of those settings on top of everything else that you've done. So what I've done here, I've just used a preset that I like, but actually yeah, I didn't like how intense the look of the look filter was. So I actually set the look filter to be half of what it actually ended up being. On this stream here, the look filter works absolutely fine on this camera. The problem is on the camera for the C920, I didn't like the look of it, so I put it by 50%, so it only applied half of that filter. All this really does for me is just give myself a little bit more color than I would otherwise have, and it's only a slight subtle thing, but it makes a big difference. Now, overall, I know this isn't perfect, and this camera look might not be to everyone's taste, but the key thing here, it is to your personal preference. Next, we move on to the microphone, which is the Fine Fine 683A. I'm a really big fan of this microphone. As I said in the first video, I'll link a sound test that I did for this against the HyperX Quadcast. Incredible value for money. Works really, really well straight away out of the box just by buying this. You're doing yourselves massive favors. I'm going to show a few more little things that I do to further improve the sound quality of this really good microphone. Straight away, we stick it on the boom arm. We don't want this sitting on the desk because if it's sat on the desk, first of all, you get less flexibility over where you can put this. Secondly, you can't get it as close to your mouth in general, especially if you're a taller person. And next, also, every little noise, if it's connected on a small tripod to your desk, every little noise that you make on your desk is more likely to be picked up and reverbed through the stand. So first, we'll just talk briefly about positioning here, and we won't go into too much detail, but you basically want to have around about a fist length of distance between yourself and the microphone. And you also want to make sure the microphone is as far away as the keyboard and mouse as you can make it. Now, you can, if you want, add the microphone onto every single scene, or here, you can see I'm just adding this microphone as the default, which means it'll 
appear on every single scene. But as you can see straight away here, it's peeking into the red zone, which really isn't a good sign at all. Our objective here is to make the sound sound as nice as possible. We want to cut out as many background noises as possible. We want it to be at a level where it's not hurting people's ears, but not so quiet that also people are going to struggle to hear it even when they turn it up. So really our objective here is to get it between the very end of the green zone, peeking into the yellow zone. We want to keep it in that zone as much as possible. If it drops down too low, chances are people might not be able to hear it. And if it drops into the red zone too high, then people are going to actually get like it's, it might potentially hurt them. Now you can actually change the base level of the microphone volume, both on the microphone itself by turning the knob, but also within the mixer. So if you find that it's just consistently going too high, simply just turn it down. Now the noise gate, the objective here is to basically cut out the lower levels of volumes. You can also use an upper limit noise gate as well, which will shut off any noises that go above a certain level. But there are other ways we can do that, for example, with a compressor or with a limiter. So I'm more concerned with the open threshold when we're talking about noise gates. So all we're really trying to do here is make noises on the keyboard and make noises with the mouse and on the desk. And we want to make sure that when we're making those noises, they're not being picked up on the mixer itself. But equally, we don't want it to be such a high gate that normal speech and even quiet speech won't come through the microphone. So there's a real sort of middle ground level here where we got it high enough that it cuts out the background noise and buzzing and humming of the PC and stuff like that, but not so high that we get clipping on the audio. And you can really fine tune that by sort of slamming them, your mouse and slamming your keyboard and hitting your desk a little bit to try and cut out some of those things. At that level there, my voice is coming through cleanly. There's no clipping coming with my voice, but I also when I'm typing and clicking and there's no computer humming coming through when I stop speaking. And as we close the window earlier as well, there's even less background noise coming through too. Now we're going to go into a limiter. Now what a limiter will do is it basically will put a stop on the amount of volume that comes out at the top. So it will put like a hard stop on how high the volume can actually go. So even if you're screaming at a much higher decibel in your room or your streaming room, the stream isn't going to be having their eardrums burst by your speech there. As you can see here, setting it to minus 20 just gets it into the green zone. Setting it at minus 12 gets it quite high into the yellow zone. And when we're getting into the minus fours, the minus tens, it's starting to get into the red zone. So now with the compressor, usually people work with a three or a four to one compressor ratio. That's pretty industry standard. You're probably going to be okay with a three or a four to one. Briefly, what a compressor is meant to do here is the stuff that gets through the noise gate at the very bottom end of the speech, it wants to lift that by adding some output gain to those lower noises. And anything that's really, really loud, it wants to squish down into a more sort of normalized range. And the simplest and best way to get the threshold right, a lot of people get the threshold wrong. I got this wrong a lot when I first started streaming. Speak quite loudly within your microphone, not the loudest, but just quite loudly. And then reduce down the threshold decibels until you start to see the audio levels drop. And as soon as that happens, we're adding somewhere between six and 10 decibels back onto that. And the reason for this is we're going to make up that gain with an output gain, which will bring those noises and levels back again. So what we're trying to do to test this further is basically just speak at low, medium and high levels and make sure that that compressor, the audio levels are getting into those zones that we talked about. So late on in the greens and early on in the yellows, even when you're whispering, the compressor should lift that if you've got the gain level right. And at the top end, it should push it down if you've got the threshold level right. So now we've got our camera sorted, we've got our audio sorted. You can also look at equalizers for the audio as well. I've not got into equalizers in this, but VS2 plugins are one option for you to look at for equalizers. But there's a load of other plugins and stuff you can get for your microphone. When you're looking at equalizer, you really are fine tuning the sound of your voice rather than thresholds and volumes. One of the reasons I've decided not to go into it is because that's probably a video of its own, but it's just to say here right now that you can still further improve the quality and the tones of the different frequencies of your voice to really fine tune that if you want to do that. Now, really, it's all about making the stream as nice as possible. I'm first going to mention right now, I'm not going to go into scene nesting, but you can do so much stuff when you do scene nesting in OBS Studio or even Streamlabs OBS. And in fact, in Streamlabs OBS, there are certain things you simply cannot do unless you do scene nesting. So I'm just going to link this video here and I also link it on the card at the end of this video. If you really want to further the different things on your stream, I'll 
would consider strongly looking at that nesting video. It's a really good video just to help amplify some of the more creative things that you can do on your stream. Now you see all I'm really doing is just installing some off the shelf overlays that I've got from Streamlabs. I happen to have a Streamlabs Prime account, but there's loads of free resources you can use to get stream overlays completely free of charge too. Or you can pay like a one-off fee on Nerd or Die or Own.TV or something like that. You can get these things off the shelf and they don't cost too much. Now you're probably thinking using off the shelf overlays is not a great thing, but I see so many people that don't even use off the shelf designs for their overlays and they're the ones that really look like cheap and nasty streams. Literally just spending five or 10 minutes installing some overlays and adding a few browser sources will make a huge difference to your stream. For example, you can add stream goals if you want to add goals. You can have event lists or you can have labels. These are all things that I've done videos on, so I'll link them in the description below. All these things will just elevate the level and interactivity of your stream. But as an absolute minimum, if you're just starting out and you want to make a stream look a lot more expensive, a budget setup like a $250 setup, do all the things I've mentioned in this video, but you can on top of that add some overlays to your stream and it will make a huge difference to the look and feel and the professionalism of your stream. So here we can see I'm basically just kind of whizzing around the camera and trying to put this sort of fairly nice overlay. I'm actually not a big fan of this overlay, but on the laptop that I was using, it looked quite good, but it still looks a lot more professional than it just being completely blanked. Now, one thing I see a lot of people doing is getting the outline of the border wrong with the webcam overlay. You want to make sure that the camera source is below the webcam border. So the border sits on top of the camera, and then you just want to make the size of the camera slightly smaller than the border so it fits within it. I see so many people that don't quite get that fit right, and it just looks really nasty, and it's such an easy thing to fix. I'd recommend adding some alerts as well to your stream. That just means that anyone that follows or subscribes or whatever will get a pop-up. Again, such a simple, quick thing you can do to make your stream look and feel a lot better. And there are loads of awesome widget themes available for your overlays too, including those that will support alert box and alerts on your stream. So here I'm just doing sort of a scroll through of the different scenes that came with this particular pack that I got. There's an intermission screen here. So there you go. I hope you can agree there with being able to take a really good value for money budget streaming setup and turn it into a streaming setup that looks and feels and sounds so much better. If you enjoyed this, hit the like. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and have a wonderful day. Take care.